Hello, everybody. In this video podcast, I have a conversation with a very, very good friend of mine. It's Adam Blythe. You might know him from presenting and commentating on Global Cycling Network Eurosport uh, on all the big grand tours and the classics. Well, as I said, he's a good friend of mine. Uh, we go back a very long way and we basically talk about his transition from being a professional to what he's doing now. And we go behind the scenes of a day on the Tour de France. And we talk about some other stuff too, including our hair. Adam Blythe, uh, the lovely Adam Blythe. Thank you very much for joining me. It's a pleasure, Matt. Absolute pleasure. It's nice to um, see. I've seen you very recently, but it's nice to see you again. Yes, in a digital form. Uh, we were down in, mm. in Bath, weren't we? I actually shared with the people on We Love Cycling my little... I did no cycling for that weekend of We Love Cycling, but I just took people around Bath landmarks um, and showed... So it was quite... It was quite... <laughs> <laughs> like a tourist guide of Bath. Yeah, like this is, you know, because Bath for me is quite an important place. I lived nearby, got married there, and then GCN started there. So, you know, it's quite an important part of um, of what I do. Right, mate. You, say, you say Bath and not Bath, though. Yeah, do I you do. you have a Bath at home or a Bath? Do you know what? Because my, Holly, my wife, is, as you know, I just thought other people who are watching, listening, um, my wife's from Nottingham, so she says Bath. And I lived up north Correct in Cheshire life. for ages, but I say both, mate. I, I'm I'm like a a nomad. My accent changes if I'm in London with my, you know, with like Chris Lillywhite or something. Then I go yeah. super Cockney like, and if I'm not north, I go a little bit northern. <laughs> so. Brilliant. Well, it's funny because we've got the kids, and because Kelly, my partner's from down south, she says uh, giraffe, and I say giraffe. But when you're reading a kid's book, there's a rhyming word. I forgot what it is, but I now say giraffe, which is slightly annoying. Yeah, so it's like you slowly but surely getting posher, isn't it? That's what it sounds like. like. Yeah, hopefully not. I'll have to knock that out of me a little bit if it is. <laughs> it's a bloody giraffe. Yeah. Um, and I'd just like to say, and I'm sure the people watching this um, this Zoom audio visual treat will commend you upon your hair, mate, because um, you've always been known for – not just being an, a, a wonderful cyclist and just a lovely human being, but boy, you've got you, your hair is looking great today. Could you, I believe you had your, your as you, your words were, you had your ears lowered this afternoon, yeah? Yeah, I had my ears lowered. I went to a barber and I've got my normal barber and I went to another one a diff, like a few weeks ago and it was brilliant. And so I said, right, I'm going to go back to him. But this guy wasn't my normal barber, it was another guy. So I was like, oh, I really want it cut, benefit of the doubt. And I just said a little bit off the sides. And he said, uh, is number three all right? I said, no, 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 no. <laughs> I want a little bit off the sides. But anyway, you know one of these, he was a barber. He's done an all right job, but you know one that just gets a little bit happy with the scissors? Yes. Yeah, it was It was one of them. And he used like the, uh, what's it called? The Is it a trimmer? The trimmer, yeah. Yeah, he used a trimmer, but he kept going down in trim length. And I'm not a hairdresser, I don't know what's happening, but it's turned out all right. But it's looking good, mate. I mean, I, I think... I think the people at home or wherever they are watching this will be more than happy with your hairdo, mate. But uh, Ed, I mean, I think we know each other really well. We're not only work colleagues, but we're mates as well. So it's quite yeah. a, it's quite an interesting one, this, because I, I know I just wanted to share with the people on We Love Cycling a bit about your journey. They, they'll know you. Many will know you from being a very successful pro cyclist, British champion, ridden Grand Tours, won some big races. But you retired quite young, relatively young. And now, yeah. and I remember that transition period through to doing what you're doing now. And you're you know, one of the, the main folk at Eurosport GCN Discovery, Warner Brothers. I mean, whatever you want to call it nowadays. Uh, front of house, loving it. But to talk a little bit about, I mean, actually, did you think, I know it's what you wanted to do because we had lots of conversations a couple of years ago, didn't we? But did you yeah. think you'd get to this point? Did you have that unwavering unwa self-belief? Just talk a little bit about what it's been like to get to where you are now, mate? Um, it was difficult. To, well, it, it was weird. It was difficult in a sense, but not difficult as well. So when I, I was still riding, I did a couple of shows with Eurosport, as, as you know, because we were there on site a couple of times together. Um, but it always be dipping in and out, so I was still racing. And then when I decided to retire, I knew, as, as I spoke to you, I knew that I wanted to go and do commentary. I love commentating more than I do the sofa stuff, just because that, for me, is... That's then, it's now, it's a live bike race. I love talking about it when the action happens, love it. Um, so I kept doing that, and then I got onto the sofa a little bit every now and again. And 
I went to, I think it was back in 2019, was it 19? Yeah, I had a call from uh, NBC and they said, would you like to come on the motorbike at the Tour de France and be our reporter? So I was like, oh yes, I'd love to do that. It's really like bucket list stuff. You can't pay to get totally. a motorbike. Yeah, yeah. So it was, and I loved it, fresh out of retirement. And yeah, I just absolutely loved it. Just being amongst it and talking about it. But the producer there, Joel, I think the English version is Joel, but we like, we like to call Joel. He's from Long Island, man. So oh, yeah, okay. super American. Got you. But he was... He taught me so much in terms of reporting, so I had to do interviews before the stage. He really helped me through it a lot and gave me so much feedback um, that he, he sent me after it finished. He sent me the first like hit I did on the motorbike compared to the last one in Paris. And he was like, look, look how much you've done, you know, look how far you've come in there. So I learned so much from him, went back again the next year and it was the same again, but less more friendly because we're good friends, but less polite. So he was really, if I did something that he didn't like or I said something, he'd be like yapping down my ear, swearing at me, going nuts. Wow. And I'm like, I was a bit like, oh, that little, that little <laughs> monkey, <laughs> like quite angry at myself. But the nice thing was two minutes later, he'd come back like, hey, man, so yes, so we all good? Sorry about that. Just had a lot of stuff going on, but completely back to normal. Yeah. But that to me was just kind of, I love that because it was like, you've messed up, don't do it again. Now let's carry on. Let's yeah. carry on, but better. Um, so when I did that, I, I loved it. And I learned so much about the television side, even though I wasn't sat on a sofa like I am now, I learned so much. And then got a call last year to do it um, with GCN. And yeah, I just, it's kind of weird because you work hard to say the right things and all that kind of stuff. But Honestly, I'm just myself all the time on air. So I think yeah. that's the main thing is that I work hard to try and do the preparation, find out as much as I can and research things. But I just completely rely on just my knowledge of bike racing, growing up bike riding, spending, let's say, 70% of the time at the back of the peloton. You learn to <laughs> you learn to wiggle your way through a bike race, though. Yeah. But I did. Yeah. I, was never, I was never a big engine. I think it was Marc Sajon, the first manager I had in Lotto Sudal and he described me as a he's like a Vespa but he can do what the Ducatis do that's a, so in terms that's, of that's not, quite a compliment though mate isn't it in terms of your, yeah. your ability on a bike your bike handling your knowledge of positioning and just your the, the craft the race craft that you had is yeah. So, yeah that's really valuable isn't it massively for me that was well that was what I got by on is doing as little as possible with maximum Results almost. Yeah. It's like the Italians say about cooking. Minimal effort, maximum satisfaction. <laughs> yeah. that, was me, that was me as a bike rider, but sadly that drifted a little bit into my training as well, which is not what you want as a pro bike rider. But um, yeah, so I think through doing all that stuff, that helped me with looking at a bike race in certain ways, looking at bike riding in certain ways, the body language and being fresh out of the peloton, you know a little bit about each person and the almost a little ticks almost when they're suffering you can tell yeah there's like a certain thing they'll do position on the bike dropping a gear maybe all this kind of stuff so when I'd started last year doing it no start this year sorry I was just myself but really really focused on trying to pick apart as much as I could and just be brutally honest with yeah. with everything that I see if it's right if it's wrong I'm not I'm not trying to say anyone's done something wrong I'm just giving my opinion um and it was yeah, it seems to be well received yeah I, I think you know from you have been well received mate you do a cracking job and and i can testify uh, like Checks i said in the post. yeah no, no worries mate and actually just uh <laughs> if you just just paypal it just paypal okay it. perfect right, yeah that's, that's fine, fine. Brand. um no i i can i can testify i've worked quite a lot with you now um i wish yeah. we'd worked a little bit more together but um we do work i've worked a lot with you and I can I can say to people here because I know a lot of these people who are watching will have, have heard you and seen you on GCN Eurosport, um, and I've seen you off camera. You are basically you are the same thing. <laughs> you are it is the same. There's no quite quite often, and it, when you're a lead um, a lead commentator or a lead presenter, that there's there's you. Then there's an amplified version of you, but in the role that you do, you're just the same all the time. Even when you're on the mm. sofa because you don't anchor it, you're there, but you're a key part of it. You're able to be you comes through in the way in the way you dress the whole lot mate it's just you it's not 
I don't think in any way the bit we get on screen or behind the mic when you're commentating and, and down the pub or out on your bike, it's exactly the same, Adam Blythe. And I think people can see that they can, they can, they, it resonates with them because there's just an honesty through it. And, yeah. and and the way you can unpick a bike race um, in that very um, everyday, you've got a very nice manner about it. you. You you can pick a bike race apart. You can, you know, deconstruct it, but in language that people can identify with, you don't alienate anybody. You're every, yeah. you know, everybody can, can see what you're saying and you, and you are unafraid to criticize or to, because you see things in in bike races that are, could be quite puzzling, but, but our job as commentators is to make people understand, tell them the story, but also explain yeah. or at least try and say why on earth did he or she do that on the bike? What? And then sometimes you will critique it, you know, because that's what our job is. And the more you can do that, the more beautiful cycling becomes because people start to understand it. Yeah, exactly. I think that's the main thing. Is it, I think a lot of people that I've heard in the past are always they're a little bit afraid to upset someone. They don't yeah. want to get on the wrong side of someone. And it's it's not that I don't want to get I definitely don't want to get on the wrong side of anyone, doesn't matter who it is. But I I'll always stand by what I've said, my facts about what I've said about him. Ultimately, there was a very similar thing with Remco recently about some puncture in the last two K. Got a lot of abuse for that, but I might have said it in the wrong way, but I stand by what I said. I, I, we only I could only see and what I saw didn't look right to me. It just didn't look right. After we found out the information about it, but then and there, we have to talk about it. We can't gloss over it. We can't be like, oh, something's happened. It's like, no, that looks different to me. That looks strange to me. We need yeah. to talk about this now. And you do get criticism, of course you do, and you get a lot do. of people calling you out, calling the names, this, that, and the other. But that's part of the job, and I still stand by what I said. It didn't, at that time, it was a specific puncture. I couldn't see a puncture. And I said that after it. I admitted it. Yes, I was wrong. There was a puncture, yeah. but... I think that's it. It's, it's just very much that's our job, right? Call it, call it how you see it. Yeah. Um, and if you're wrong, hold your hands up. But I think that's the main thing. Don't, don't afraid for me. Don't afraid to ever be wrong. Yeah, I, I think it, like you said, you if you would, we are relatively neutral as commentators, but also when when we see things, we have to try and explain them. And I, as you say, um, and I think it, the way that you commentate should replicate the rhythm of the race a little bit. There's slower moments. There's mm. there's bits that are super exciting and, and we know excited you get. And I think that's a joy. I think it's an absolute yeah. joy. You're just yourself. And we still like riding our bikes when we can. We still like having a bit of a nudge and we still love watching a good bike race, don't we? You could, And oh. I think that, I think that we, I think the word passion's overused a lot in cycling, but there is a passion that you can really sense when you're, talking mate when you're commentating whether it's on the oh, sofa you, or whether it's a bike race and it excites people it infuses people brings more people in um and, and i think making mistakes is is inherently human as well if you imagine course, if you're afraid yeah. to make any mistakes it's like it will become really sterile and making mistakes mm. just shows you that you're you're brave you're, you're bold enough to say like okay made that call it's what i saw which is what you do in a bike race you make the wrong yeah, exactly. calls pretty much all the time. <laughs> yeah. You're making wrong calls in a bike race. You're a bike race. You're commentating. Sometimes you might make a call that you thought was right, but on reflection wasn't. Move on. It's that's part yeah, of the, exactly. that, that's that's about the, the human side. And I think the more human you can be as a as a commentator um, and as a person in front of the vision in, in vision, you're hopefully doing it, doing your job. I mean, and you, you love it, don't you? As well, I know you love it. Don't you? Yeah, yeah. I do. Do you know what? I just love the. I love the just before the show, the after show, the commentating, the laughs, everything about it, the just the jokes and everything is for me it's just it doesn't matter if all or all Dan's happy, they'll they'll be happy, of course they will be. But it's everyone getting everyone involved, the cameraman, the sound guy, the guy upstairs that we can't even see. It's just bringing everyone together and boosting everyone, getting them in a good mood, and that could be being silly sometimes, whatever it might be. But I just love that everyone can interact with you with with us guys you know and I, I just that's the most for me that's one of the most joyful things when you finish a job and you finish say the pre-show before a race starts that everyone's done the job and everyone's happy yeah but at the same time if it's not good we can very much say look guys this wasn't right this wasn't right but then as i said about the american director just move back back into having yeah. fun times again you know it's yeah let's not bog ourselves down with it but no i absolutely i I love it, and it is a real privilege to um, to have that job because it is. There's not many people around the world that've got a job that they absolutely love. So no. yeah, very no, fortunate. 
Yeah, totally, mate. And I, th- I think it's reminding yourself of how how fortunate you are. I mean, you, you've earned, you've earned it. It's not. I mean, there's. I guess there's a small bit of fortune, but mostly it's because you're good at what you do and you put yourself mm. in a position and, and you get hired. But I think the the thing that my takeaway from it is just net. You, every day is a school day. Every bike race is a, is a yeah. school day for me. Yeah, every yeah. every broadcast is 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 a school day. You never know it all, and and especially yeah. the, this current crop of young riders coming through to expand into the more the racing side of it um how exciting is it mate just to be able to but you know we, we we think we know bike racing you never fully know but you know you know what's going on you know the riders you know what may or may not happen you you get a pretty good sense of what's going to happen but this last year and a half has been nuts hasn't it changed yeah it's yeah, just completely it's insane, changed. It? yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah it's meant to, i think the best I think by when we did the Tour de France this year, it was completely every day was like a one day race, breakaway, breakaway, breakaway. But not just little groups, there was huge groups. The only thing that we could rely on of what we knew was Wout van Aert going up the road. That was it. <laughs> Wout van Aert being a break. The rest, yeah, I don't really know what's going to happen really. So I just, yeah. that's the fun thing about it. And I think that's the challenge is, like you say, it's always learning. We can have our opinion, and the likes of you might say something that I've not looked at in that point of view. And I love that, that you can go, oh, wait a minute, yeah. That might change things of what Matt's just said to me there in commentary rather than, no, I'm right, this is yeah. what it is. I'm telling you now, it's, it's ooh, just just having a little think about and reassessing. Because every, you know, when, you, when we were bike riders, you always think you're doing the right thing. You're always trying to better yourself, always yeah. trying to get the best result. If someone else looks at you who's in the peloton trying to do the same thing, they could look at you and go, what is that guy doing? Yeah. What is that guy doing? <laughs> but it's just you never you never really hear it from them. So trying to beat you, whereas this, you always wherever you sit down with you, Rob Hatch, whoever it might be, he's just always listening to what they have to say as well. Yeah. Sean Kelly's a great example as well. He's, he'll make you look at it in a completely different way. And Sean's the king, so you have to, oh yeah, okay, Sean. <laughs> and I, 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 I've, I've, you know, Sean's got such a. Um, an interesting way of delivering stuff, but he's so confident, but always, but you know, he, and he's another co-commentator that um, will call it like it is. If he doesn't agree yeah. and say, and I do love that. And that's not being argumentative or combative. It's basically, you know, there's no, there's no real wrong or right. It's just an interpretation of a set of events, isn't it? And it, yeah. I think it's important sometimes. I mean, quite often you will agree because it's quite clear. And uh, I would say more often than not 70, 70, 30, you agree with what's, and then sometimes you're like, Hey Carlton or Hey Rob, no, no I don't think so. Um, that's yeah, important, yeah. though, isn't it? Too, and then it, it does make you think differently. Uh, and also, whether you're there's the people that we work with quite often, especially the people we work with who haven't been bike riders. I think that's great as well because they they look at it completely differently. Because you look at it from a bike rider's point of view, and yeah, they're looking yeah, at yeah. it from another point of view, and that is that's important. Like Jose or or, or you know or Rob or Rob. <laughs> Or Carlton, that they come at it from a completely different point of view as well, and it's all and that all mixed together. I think just gives the viewers more, doesn't it? You know, it's yeah, um, yeah, it's, yeah. I think for those guys, it's also there's a couple of guys who've been doing it ages, like Rob Hatch is one yeah. of them. He knows it ins and outs, but he'll always ask that question just in case, but also just for the viewers, he'll generally know the answer. He'll ask us always, "What do you think about this situation?" Yeah. He'll generally know what the situation is, but it's sure. just putting it in layman's terms, trying to explain it to your grandma at home that's just bought bike racing because it's going through beautiful France, but she wants to know why there's 44 guys in front of the race and which one's going to win and why aren't they riding harder on the front in the lead and all that kind of jazz. So, yeah, I think when you get people like Rob, especially Hatch, it makes, and you, makes the job a lot easier to explain things and just walk through things a lot quicker. Yeah, yeah. uh, That's the important thing. One of the things you learn as a, as a, as a commentator or is never and even when i was making videos for for, for gcm back in the day never assume knowledge because you've got a, 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 a exactly a, 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 an audience that generally grows um the further you get towards the end of a bike race we know a lot of people tune in 10 15k to go for the last hour last half an hour so you've got more and more people and the more people you have the more varied their knowledge set of knowledge is going to be so you've yeah. always got to you never want to alienate the people who really know what's going on, you want to keep them on side. But then there's people who are looking at it as this amazing, strange, spe- beautiful spectacle. <laughs> and and your job is to try and explain what on earth is going on. Because quite often, yeah. sometimes you're like, 
I don't really know what this situation is all about. Why, why is that <laughs> yeah. team chasing? Why is he bringing his yeah. teammate back? And you've got to try and explain it as best you can. And, and I always find that just great fun to try to do that. Yeah. I actually don't know what's happening, but we'll tell you what's <laughs> happening. And hopefully while I'm saying this, we'll probably get in our heads what's happening. <laughs> Adam, can you just explain to the people that are, are watching um, what a typical day looks like on the Tour de France? I know uh, pre- a few years ago, you guys were on site. Um, yeah. You're in a studio now. Be for, for multiple reasons, but take us through a classic day in the office for you on GCN Eurosport. Well, why don't you get up early? Take us through Tour the, France, and the whole yeah. day. Yeah, Tour de France day, mate. So Tour de France day, we're down in London. So it'll be a seven o'clock wake up pretty much every day. Um, taxi, 7.30, 7.45. That's 40 minutes into the office. 40 minutes once we're in there, discuss with then uh, with Doug, our producer, discuss what we're going to talk about, the key, the, the running order it's called. So it's what the conversation is throughout, what we're going to talk about. Sure. Discuss that with him, chuck some ideas in, um, record maybe one or two. Oh, before that, actually, I get my makeup done. Makeup, get changed. And then maybe record something in terms of the, um, the profile for the stage coming up, maybe, yeah. or you know, gearing on bikes, any of that kind of jazz. And then we'll do that, go on air at about half past 10, 11. Hold on one second. I'm sorry, very right. sorry, everyone that's listening or watching. This is, this is, this is live. I've got Spider-Man. Oh, hello, Spider-Man. Is, it, is, that, is that Peter Parker? <laughs> is it not? No, it's Peter Parker, is it? <laughs> Stu Blythe, isn't it, bud? Can you say hello to Matt? Hello. How are you doing? Lovely to see you. I know where you get your hair from. Give me a kiss. No, no, buddy. Ooh, love you. Yes, I can come and take you in the pal. Um, um, sorry about that, guys. Fine. <laughs> so after that, um, we yeah record the show, and that's it was half an hour in the Tour de France, half an hour, thirty-five minutes. Finish that, and then a uh, typical day for me would be record another VT, so another with this technical videotape, but it's just a a recording that they'll show sure. either in the show or after the show, whatever it might be. Um, so that is generally writing things into auto cue myself because I'm not a great reader, so I have to put it in as I would say it. Sure, okay. That'd be a good half an hour doing that whilst the race is going on, so trying to keep an eye on everything. Um, finish that, record the VT, straight into commentary for an hour and a half. Back out for 20 minutes, have a bit of lunch. Um, and then, yeah, it's basically the final of the race then. So yeah. then back in the studio watching it, hair and makeup, a little bit of a touch up all that kind of jazz <laughs> finish the show um back off back to the hotel after that 40 minutes little bike ride if i can fit one in depending on how i'm feeling half 10 11 bed and then off we go again and then start again it's a busy day yeah, yeah. it's a busy day and that's i think quite a lot of people get um don't misinterpret or might imagine that you know, you've got a lot of time to ride your bike and quite often i mean i love riding my bike and i do ride as much as i can but bizarrely working in cycling television and, and and internet you don't or finding the time to ride and especially with you you got three kids you know family it's, um although you're away from home for that it's quite hard to fit any cycling in isn't it it really is hard to cram it in so I, i've always said this with when you're doing commentary or if you've got to watch a full day and you need to always pay attention to it yeah. it is very tiring i know that sounds ridiculous because a lot of people do it for joy but it's very tiring picking up little bits that then we'll show in the pre-ratio or the post-ratio, yeah. feeding things in about the minutest detail or the biggest detail, whatever it might be. But it's just always locking in to do it. And as I said, in London, it was yeah half seven taxis, quarter to seven o'clock wake up, basically. So it's seven until half seven till yeah. hotel back to hotel. By the time you get back, you've not sat down for 10 minutes just to relax, basically, throughout the whole day. So when you do get back, you're like... I think I just need to sit down. I can't face going out on my bike right now, which is completely yeah. normal. Yeah. But it is, um, it's the days when it's a little bit easier than you can nip out, but it's always easier at the tour as well because it's summer, so it's light until about half nine. Yeah. Yeah. That's a good one. So what's looking back over this year, because your, your gig with Eurosport GCN is, is the, the, obviously the tours, the Giro Tour of Welter, and then all the, the Blue Ribbon Classics, and then one or two other comms bits you do. So you're quite busy. And are you, yeah. You, what other stuff do you do? And I know you do some stuff with, with Madison in the UK. So it's what other stuff do you just, just fills your year, Adam? 
Hill's my year. I've got a little to do little bit little bits with Skoda as well, trying to uh, help them as much as they can sell some cars, hopefully. Yep, yep. Um, and they are brilliant cars, by the way, guys. <laughs> um, and then I work for a touring company called LeBlanc, which is basically we go on the tours, but I've not been able to do that many of this because of the full calendar. We are going to and Ibiza very soon, though, aren't we? We're going to Ibiza. We are. We are, exactly. Yeah. I'm going to have to... Yeah, I need, yeah, I need to lose a bit of weight, I think, yeah, and get some hey, you'll a be lot fine, of riding mate. in. You'll be fine. <laughs> I went out on the bike today, Matt. It was not fine. Wasn't it was it? horrific. Where did you Oh, do? it was terrible. That, where, how Just far did you go? Just the Cheshire Flats. Did, you... did 60, 65k. Blast, that's yeah. not bad. After 20, I had to stop for a Coke. <laughs> <laughs> It oh, blew mate. my lights out. Oh, it was mate. awful. Did you? I bet um, you went. I bet you gave it a nudge though, straight off the bat though, didn't you? Just like you just lent on it and then just kind of yeah. Opposite, opposite. Oh, so right. I went out yesterday in the Peak District, and I used to do. It was like a little two-hour loop, and I used to do it. And you'll be the same. You get an idea of how fast you go on these roads yeah. normally. And I've yeah. not been in there for a while. In there, I'm in the Peak District. Honestly, it was just horrific. I was just creeping round but badly and then I got back and I was like right I'm going to go out tomorrow but I'm going to take it steady I'm going to just purposely go easy so I purposely went easy but I met Ian Stannard um, and Ian's really unfit as well but it was still that little bit of like <gasps> it just wasn't it, it was enjoyable oh, but brilliant. it was still painful yeah. so yeah I do need to run my bike um, so we've got that and then I do stuff with Madison Genesis which is an old cycling team they yep. sell bikes within the UK uh, I'm just trying my best to promote them as well they're, they're brilliant um, do some videos with them gravel videos they love gravel so every now and again we have to go film one of them I need to speak to you about some of this actually we That's should do we, we, we need yeah. to do we're going to hopefully do um, yeah a gravel kind of team up we've been both been really yeah. busy but I think in the winter we should do something mate that would be gravel exciting, bonanza. A gravel bonanza a gravel bonanza yeah, perfect. I'm getting excited. Um, so now, yeah, I'm getting excited. I'm getting excited. Yeah, so just, I mean, yeah. It, so you're busy, and then you've got your family as well, mate. But before we wrap things up, it's been just it's been really interesting, just getting a bit of an insight for people into to what you do now, and and clearly you're absolutely loving it. But with all the racing that you've seen this year, um, it has been an amazing year. It's been a treat, really, isn't yeah. it? What's been your particular highlight out of all the racing you've had? Sort of what would it be, mate? If you Easy. if you can think of one, what what gone him? Easy stage four Tour de France and Wout van Aert just rode off in the in the yellow jersey. And then he, he did that when he ago. when he crossed the line, didn't yeah. he? Yeah. And then he did that. He was he's sponsored by a certain drinks company, which might give you wings. Of oh, course, um, yeah, yeah, of course, yeah, yeah, yeah. So that that for me was like the best eleven k to go, attacking the best riders in the world of a climb, getting over the top with the basically the tour winner. And just dropping them, riding away from them for 11k and holding off a group of sprinters that is like 60 strong. For me, that was just <laughs> doss of a cat kind of thing. That was very impressive. Then it carried on, obviously, but it was, was it the, wasn't uh, amazing. It was a moment, wasn't it? I think, and everybody knew as well what they were going to do. It wasn't as if they were suddenly um it was a surprise move. He literally just rode the, the entire squad off oh, the rest of the tour de France off as well. I mean, you remember yeah. Adam Yates going over the top. You could just see him just start to tie up. It just didn't yeah. have anything. Just and then, <laughs> yeah. and then somehow Van Aert found another little. He just found another gear and went again, didn't he? And then just it, it was, it was, it was Incredible. glorious, wasn't it? It, it was fairy yeah. tale bike racing, really, wasn't it? But in in a, I think that way. that day as well, being in the yellow jersey, being as you said, everyone knows who's watching him, but no one could do anything about it. No one could catch him. No one could no. follow him. He was just like on another planet. It was it's brilliant. Great, that was it? my highlight. That was my highlight. Yeah, I think that has to be one of mine, mate. I mean, that's that's a, a great memory. I was fortunate enough to be to be on the ground working with you guys, wasn't I? But um, at, oh, a, you were, yeah. at a distance, and every day we would go into the Skoda Tribune in the in the village and sit up. Um, so it's a big thank you. I never really thanked the guys at Skoda for actually looking after me. Numerous coffees, cold drinks, lovely little sandwiches and cakes to fuel us up for the day. So thanks, nice. thanks, thanks, Skoda. It's that's good. That's that, I remember when I was there for that. We used to go in there every day. And we'd I'd leave with the motorbike with like twenty <laughs> sandwiches. I did always leave sandwiches. With, good idea, mate. Yeah, Brilliant. I did always leave with some with a Fanta or some or some water in my back pocket. But uh, but mate, it's been a pleasure. Uh, I'm going to hold you to Thank a gravel you. bonanza, and I yep, shall see fine. you very very soon, mate. But um, it's been a pleasure, mate. And thanks very much. And your hair's looking just immaculate. Just I, I mean, Cheers, mate. Thank you. I don't Can't know. See it. I mean, I've got a bit of a yours is looking mind. fabulous as well. It's not I, too bad. We had a look. We had a little chat before we went on air, didn't we, and we talked did. about hair tools to use and diffuser. 
I know. With the soft, bouncy curls, yeah. Nice. I, nice. I mean, w- one last thing before I used to, um, back in there when I was racing in the early noughties, um, when the emo kind of thing was a fashion, I had hair straighteners. I used to take them on races. Oh, me too. Me too. Yeah, yeah I used to have hair straighteners. Anyway, yeah, they might, hopefully they might, they might cut that bit out, but it, it's fine. I thought you were going <laughs> to say you put lemon juice in your hair. I never I used did to that. Like dye your hair blonde. We, yeah, you used Not to dye it of, completely. Yeah, you used to get like these yeah. little streaks in it, didn't you? Like golden streaks. Anyway, so we can try it on our gravel bonanza. Yeah, so we've got gravel bonanza. Also, uh, everybody watching, you've got some hair tips to go away with as well as uh, a nice, t- <laughs> a nice chat. I mean, it's, oh, that's brilliant. value for money right there. Anyway, Adam, exactly. take care, mate. It's been an absolute Thank pleasure. Thank you very much, and I, and I shall catch you soon, mate. Amazing, mate. Thank you very much for having me. Cheers, bud. Cheers, bud. See that.